<clears throat> so welcome to the um, welcome to this webinar. Good morning or afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are, I guess. Um, today we're doing a webinar about um, Neo4j's professional services team, <clears throat> and um, and most of the time at Neo4j we do webinars about um, about our technology, about um, new releases of our product, the features of our product, uh, specific use cases like uh, you know, fraud, knowledge management, etc. Um, about Neo4j applied in specific industries or, or specific customer implementation. Um, if you look at the um, all the recorded webinars um, on our website, you'll uh, I guess you'll know what I mean. Uh, but not today. Today we're doing a, a session on our professional services team, our consulting and training arm, and if you want, and uh, and you could ask yourself why are we doing a, a specific session on this? Well, graph technology has since since some time come of age when neo4j started out uh, pioneering graph technology over 10 years ago um, most customers started out with um, relatively small r d or smaller scale projects uh, but that time has long gone and um, and over the years we've built up uh, quite an amount of customers that have that are run very large and complex uh, endeavors based on graph technology and and these projects often impact the a large part of their organizations and these implementations might last uh, many years um, and on further down the presentation I'll give you some examples of, uh, of some of these projects uh, but with some of these uh, complex projects obviously comes the need for uh, professionals assist professional assistance um, business critical projects for which uh, our customers um, free up significant funds uh, on the implementation um, using what they consider new technology or new to their organization at least um, means that they want guarantees that the projects are going to finish on time and with, within budget and i guess that is where uh, professional services comes into the mix um, so that is where we're going to dedicate some of uh, some time uh, some time today but before i kick off um, i probably want to quickly introduce myself so my name is um, Jan Artsen, um, born in Belgium, with the kind of job I have running services, I kind of live on the roads. Um, I'm going to save um, save any details on my private life. That's not why we're here. Um, but um, what is relevant, I guess, to this session is that I've been working in software implementation industry and uh, and consulting for the well, actually, all of my professional career. Um, I ran. I worked for some of the larger SIs at the beginning of my career. Uh, ran my own consulting company for um, for seven years or so, and after that, started working with some Silicon Valley companies like Neo um, that are pioneering new technologies. And I started building um, professional services teams for those uh, for those companies. Um, and uh, just checking. Okay, I just saw something come up in the panel but that's just around the question um, so um, so that's what I've been doing in the last couple of years and roughly over a year well about a year ago I joined Neo4j to um, to start running this uh, professional services uh, pro professional services team so which brings me to to the mission of Neo4j's professional services um, in my experience, running a services business for a software company is uh, is different than running a regular SI or a, a regular um, software services company. Um, whilst obviously um, we want to deliver high level quality consulting, the final and, and most important objective for us is that customers are successful with the Neo4j products, the graph database, the cipher language, Bloom, the entire ecosystem. So it's not just about delivering a good project and delivering high quality consulting services. It's about making sure that our customers have a good experience with the, with the product too. Um, in essence, that means that, um, that we always aim for a great product experience and first, and, and well, that doesn't diminish the fact that the services experience needs to be good. But it means that um, we collaborate really closely with engineering. It means that our consultants have a have a, a tight connection into engineering, um, that they all have a 
deep product experience, um, most of them actually up to the code level, that they that they can extend or or correct the product in case that in in the rare cases that uh, that should be needed, um, and that they can work with engineering to um, to improve documentation and the and the general user uh, the general user experience. Um, in essence, that that means that wherever we think we can shortcut the services work to make sure we get a better product and a better out of the box experience, that is um, that is what we will do. And I guess that's that's the biggest difference between a regular SI and um, and uh, Neo 4 J service. Okay. The services that we um, the services that we deliver break down in two types of engagement. Um, the first type I kind of classify as training and enablement, um, and and it fits with the speech I just gave you about about product experience. Um, most of our customers, and, and roughly speaking, I would say eighty percent of our customers. Um, Actually, do not need a lot of service. Do not need a lot of services from Neo4j, um, and that is because, in fact, we aim for standard training and enablement, making sure they get up to speed with uh, with our product rapidly, um, and we're just there to advise and mentor them. Um, we have a large amount of customers that get started with just a basic package of training, five, ten days. Um, uh, re really small amounts of, uh, of training where we only provide the training, maybe review some of the design work that they have done, um, have a couple of checkpoints along their uh, along their implementation, and um, and that is that is kind of it. Um, the reason that a lot of our customers can get started like that is because over the years we kind of got to know what are the the, the most common use cases in implementing graph technology. And um, and we've kind of packaged all the things you need to know to get started on any of those use cases in the, in some packaged services. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about those packaged services later on. But in essence, um, all of the services packages that we have and that I'm talking about here are based on years of experience working with customers, identifying what are the common needs, and making sure we all we put those into a uh, into a package document. Um, and as I said, that's the majority of our customers, but there are always customers that um, that want to do um, more customized things that are pushing the limits of technology and uh, want to extend Neo4j's capabilities that are doing um, something that is really business critical and they absolutely want a full guarantee that things are going to run well. Um, that are doing a major investment in in, in new technology um, that have a time critical project, um, and as I said, maybe do some cutting edge stuff. And those are the customers that might want a deeper involvement from uh, from Neo4j. Um, that's a smaller amount of our customers, but obviously takes up um, takes up a lot of more time from my team. Um, these are, I guess, also the customers where we probably learn the most on a continuous basis <coughs> sorry and um, and uh, and where we as I said before also feed more information back into um, into engineering and continue to improve the um, the out of the box experience of our team so knowing that we have two high level types of engagements uh, first the training and enablement category and then the category where we get much deeper involved in the solution delivery. Let me quickly walk you through the um, through the various offerings that we have. So first of all, um, there's standard product training, and I'll um, I'll go into that on the next uh, deeper into the next slide. So I won't elaborate on it here. Um, then we have what I call consulting services, um, which consists in both the package services that I was just mentioning, that which I was just mentioning. Um, or staff augmentation and us being involved in larger projects. Again, I have slides that elaborate the uh, further on in my deck. And then last but not least, for some of the larger customers where we have been deeply involved, um, 
we've ended up running some of some of the solutions that we built for the customer in the cloud and keep on maintaining them. This is a relatively small amount of customers, uh, but there's a couple of customers where we've been so deeply involved that we're actually on a continuous basis running their um, uh, running their um, their Neo4j implementations for them, um, and that connects back to the database as a service offerings that we are uh, that we're rolling out uh, right now. So some of these experience have actually gone back into the product and. Um, have turned into a, a full new uh, offering on our side, uh, cloud, a cloud service. So these are um, high level the offerings. I'll, I'll go quickly in depth on the training training part of uh, our of our offering. This is the um, this is the most standard offering. I think every software vendor um, has a has training classes. These training classes are simply about the product and its features. Um, it doesn't necessarily go in depth on um, how you use the product in a specific use case, um, but it just talks about the various um, uh, the various personas within your company that would use the that would use the product and which features or which aspects of the product they would know. The Neo4j Fundamentals course is our base course, introduction course that everybody should go through. Um, graph modeling course, I explain you everything about um, how to make a graph model, how nodes and relations are different from entity relationship, or how it is different from other uh, schemaless um, or NoSQL databases. Um, advanced Cypher course explains you how to make most use of the Cypher language. So, um, the graph equivalent of uh, SQL. The Neo4j administration and operations course is, um, is the course for the system administrators. And then we've got two courses that uh, that will be coming out um, in the second half of this year. One is the Kettle data integration course, which is a course we're putting together on mostly how do you migrate data into Neo4j. You could also use the tool to um, to export data, but we've come to we've come to notice that a lot of customers who've implemented Neo4j um, subsequently sometimes struggle to actually efficiently migrate their data into into Neo4j, um, which is why we've put this um, this course together, um, and why we've even um, uh, extended some of our tool sets to deliver functionality uh, in this area, and then. Um, the other course that is going to be rolled out second half of this year is the course on graph algorithms. Um, data science, pretty hot topic everywhere. Um, so we have some <clears throat> data science features, graph algorithms that you can run um, inside Neo4j. There's a book that has just come out and we're, um, we're putting a training together on that too. So those are the um, four existing courses and the two ones that will come out uh, later this year. Uh, to which people can subscribe and, and get trained up. Um, the formats in which we offer these trainings are um, um, are on site, um, in, most of the time in in the classroom, um, on site to the customer. But we also do these uh, these trainings uh, virtually in a virtual classroom um, led by an instructor. And um, somewhere during the second half of this year. Some of these trainings will come out in a self-paced format too. Um, that'll probably be the Neo4j fundamentals. Um, and I'm not sure at what speed we'll be able to make them self-paced available, but a lot of customers are requesting these self-paced trainings. Um, and these training materials are also used in some of the packaged services that we offer, which is, um, which is my next slide. So that's the training offerings. Um, the first of the package services that I want to talk about and that we offer are um, the Innovation Lab and the boot camps. <clears throat> uh, both of these, both of these uh, package services are, um, uh, are are an offering that's less than a week of uh, less than a week of consulting. The Innovation Labs actually. Uh, three day, uh, a three-day engagement. The boot camp is a five-day engagement, um, and these are packages that are mostly geared at getting customers up to speed on what is graph technology. 
Um, customers often come to us trying to understand whether graph technology is fit for the problems they have. Uh, and we've put together these packages specifically to, um, first of all, introduce some innovative thinking on the customer side. What are the new things that you can do with graph databases? Um, and, and, and a lot of that exercise is whiteboarding, is doing exercises with, um, uh, with post-it notes and just collecting IDs and um, get the juices flowing of the audience just to make sure we get, we get all, the, all the IDs of the table and mostly remove all the old ways of thinking. Because the reality is, if you start working with graph databases, there's a whole lot of new things you can do, but you have to forget the old way of the, the old way of thinking as how you've been designing applications in the past. Okay. Obviously, that comes with some education as to what graph solutions and what Neo4j can do for you, um, and we'll use some of the training materials um, uh, from our standard training courses. To, uh, to achieve some of that education, and the consultants will um, will typically just um, browse through the materials as and when needed, and uh, and apply it to your use case or your industry um, according to where they see it fit. Uh, once we've got some ideas on the table, and the audience is up to speed on um, on what graph technology could do for them, we'll try to validate some of the use cases that they have. And once we, we have a validated use case, um, we'll actually start taking some, some of your data and we'll start prototyping with it. Um, so typically at the end of the, in the case of the Innovation Lab, three days, or at the end of the boot camps, the five days, you'll actually have a working prototype. <clears throat> and um, in most cases, this exercise will uh, allow um, our customers to make a validation as to whether they can make a business case for um, acquiring um, Neo4j licenses and executing the project that, that is needed in terms of implementation. So that is what we aim for at the end of these, uh, at the end of these workshops. Um, most of the time there's a nice prototype that we leave the audience, which, which they can, um, can go through the wider, uh, wider people in the organization and, uh, and kind of show um, the art of the possible with, uh, with graph technology. So those are the innovation labs and the boot camps. Um, just to make the distinction between the two, because I, I, I'm aware I've not, um, I've not really made a distinction. Innovation labs are mostly geared to business users. They're, they're, more, um, they're more oriented to the end users and business people. <coughs> and, and the um, engagement is uh, slightly less technical. We'll still do the prototyping, but we'll probably give you less insight. It's more about the business ideas and, and what problems can we solve for you. Uh, whereas the bootcamp is, is the equivalent offering, but for the techies. Um, the bootcamp kind of assumes that we already have a use case and that we don't spend too much time on trying to find the use case, but we will, um, uh, but we will have, uh, who will have much more in-depth um, work on the um, on the actual implementation and uh, prototyping. So those are the innovation labs and the boot camps. Then the second uh, type of packaged service I quickly want to talk about is a solution design workshop and the solution audit. The solution design workshop is something we typically do at the start of a project. So when a customer has made a decision to go forward with uh, Neo4j as a technology, um, that's a crucial moment for us to be involved. Um, we've got a five-day solution design workshop where we run the customer through some crucial decisions around how the solution architecture should look like, um, which pieces of software will combine well or will not combine well with um, with Neo4j, uh, give you an example on on this one. There's uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of options you can take in terms of visualization technology to show um, show graph visualizations, um, but you got to know the strength and the weaknesses of all of depending on your use case. You might pick one library over another. Um, 
obviously if you pick the wrong one that could be an that could prove to be an expensive choice further down the line <clears throat> um which is which is why we want to be there to help you make those choices um another element that is important early on when you are um when you're designing your solution is the graph model. Um, I guess this is one of the areas where I see where I see projects going off track um, most of the time. Um, modeling in a graph database is significantly different from doing it in an entity relationship or any other database as far as I know. So it is, it is important um, to get some advice um, when you get to that, uh, to get to that stage. The security model is another good example of uh, of an area that is worthwhile reviewing because again um you're not working on a typically on a typical entity relationship structure or or a model that you are familiar with so setting up your security model uh, might be inherently different inherently different api and integration strategies or other other topics that get discussed um it's a it's a pretty wide agenda and um uh, a pretty broad checklist of things that we know might need attention on uh, our customer projects. That's the solution design workshop. We have an equivalent of the solution design workshop that is made for customers that have actually started working on their project already by themselves, uh, which is a solution audit. It it covers most of the same uh, most of the same topics, but in the audit instead of starting from a um, from a let's say from a blank sheet and just your requirements it actually starts from some solution development that might already be done um, in some case customers already have invested months or even years um, into um, into their application um, bear in mind we have an open source version of our product so many customers actually get started with neo4j using the, the community version um, and then only later um, engage with us um, as their implementation starts to grow and becomes more business critical so for those customers we do we do something similar as the um, solution design workshop we do it in an audit mode um, where we'll obviously review the existing application but we'll go through a similar checklist to make sure that um, all pieces of the application have the right level of uh, the right level of maturity so those are those okay um, up to here so I've talked about the um, about training and about the package services. I've really talked about the whole enablement track. Um, standard standard package services we have to make sure that that eighty percent of our customers stay on track with uh, with uh, with their usage of Neo4j. At this point, I want to talk a little bit about our involvement in some of our larger with some of our larger customers, and I. I won't go into much into too much detail. I won't use too many names either because I can't um, I can't just share I can't just share details of implementations of customers. Um, but uh, but I do want to run through a couple of examples just to show you uh, both the size of some of the projects we're involved in and and to show you how Neo4j is assisting uh, some of these customers. So the the first customer is. Um, it's a bank that also has an insurance uh, insurance arm. Um, they're based in Norway, and um, and they have a department that is responsible for um, um, for loan approvals. And so whenever they get loan approvals coming in, they need to check whether the people who are asking for a loan approval are not fraudulent in any way. So what we've uh, what we've done <coughs> in order to show them the um, uh, what Neo4j can do in terms of um, detecting fraud and, and, and fraudulent persons um, is initially do an innovation lab. That is how we started out with this customer. So we've done an innovation lab with them. And at the end of the innovation lab, we had a small prototype. Actually, I think the screenshot I had on the innovation lab slide showed part of that prototype. Um, at the end of the innovation lab, we decided together with the customer that it would make sense to spend three months project on developing a minimum viable product that they could roll out to um, to a limited group of users. So over um, just under three months period um, and within a budget of roughly 30, 35 consulting days, 
we've developed a minimum viable product uh, product for them um, based on um, obviously their data, a variety of uh, six or seven data sources, um, and uh, the Neo4j database, obviously, that, that hosts all the data, and the Bloom interface, um, on which we've developed some custom dashboards to make the data easily accessible um, and find specific types of fraud. Uh, and then, obviously, the standard Bloom capabilities to, uh, to browse the database and browse the graph model. Um, so that uh, was roughly a three-month, um, a three-month effort, 30 man days to get um, to get a first version uh, into production. Uh, second customer is totally different project. It's also insurance, but um, it's a customer that's using Neo4j for a customer 360 um, a view or a customer 360 hub. Um, so this Neo4j database actually is the backbone for a whole lot of systems that all use customer data. Um, there's um, literally uh, hundreds of applications accessing this customer hub. And every time an update or a change ha happens to customer data, that information is run through Neo4j. And changes are stored in Neo4j um, depending on a whole set of decision rules. So certain applications can overwrite specific data others cannot depending on the priorities that are given to, to these applications or the users that are that are accessing the information just to make sure that we have coherent and um, uh, coherent and properly updated customer information um, this is a major project for this customer they've been working on this for um, for over a year and um, and we've uh, we've had one full-time equivalent of our team sitting in with this customer for continuous advice on on both the usage of Neo4j as well as the building of the API um, to uh, that, that sits around the customer 360 hub. Um, the third project is, uh, is even larger. It's a bill of materials application for a, um, uh, for a car manufacturer. Um, where over the last two years we've been assisting them with prototyping um, and um, <coughs> and and ensuring that we have properly tested the technology and var various prototypes of the technology uh, for them to make a, a judgment call to go forward with the bill of materials uh, project and replacing their whole bill of materials backend um, which currently runs on uh, on AS400 still and and replace it with Neo4j. This is a um, this is a roughly, well, anticipated five years project, um, which is uh, which has started some time ago. Um, the bill of materials application has roughly 600, well, over 600, I've been told, applications that access this bill of material. Um, and there's probably going to be uh, over 100 people working on the project um, from Neo4j side. Um, don't know exactly the size of the team, but we'll probably have four or five people involved. Um, the fourth project I quickly want to mention um, is an airplane manufacturer that uses Neo4j for uh, knowledge and the documentation database, um, which they use to make sure that um, maintenance that needs to be done on the airplane uh, can be done as efficient as possible. People can easily find all the right documentation and understand how various pieces inside the, the airplane are actually connected. So on this customer, we've had a full-time equivalent, um, one, one full-time uh, architect, continuously involved for um, uh, roughly the period of two years already. Um, project number five, and then I might actually quit uh, because I'm kind of running running out of time. Um, and I want to leave some time for questions. Um, number five is a telco uh, customer that has embedded um, Neo4j inside their um, um, inside the um, uh, uh, devices um, that actually manage the telco backbone. So typically, these are large racks with uh, with telco um, material in there. Um, and Neo4j runs the whole configuration management of such a rack. And such a rack can 
contain up to um, well, typically 60,000 components with all their configurations. Um, and the beautiful thing about the, the embedded Neo4j um, implementation in such a rack is that, um, uh, that it needs to be available all the time. These, these devices cannot have any downtime. So it runs the configuration management of over 60,000 uh, pieces of equipment that continuously get updated and changed, uh, needs to be all the time available. And that's just for one device. This customer is looking at rolling out hundreds of those devices um, and has several in production um, already in both the US, uh, US East Coast and uh, in Europe. Um, and on this customer, we've uh, also had one full-time uh, person of Neo4j um, sitting in on um, sitting in on their development team um, and assisting them with uh, with the continuous development, making sure the uh, project runs smoothly. Um, last one um, is a customer in the chemical industry um, that also runs some sort of bill of materials application. Although bill of materials, obviously, for chemicals is uh, is significantly different than it is for, for instance, a car manufacturer. But um, in essence, this customer have have uploaded all the recipes for various chemical products into a Neo4j database, which allows them to do a lot of assessments in terms of um, well, how many, which ingredients do I need um, in order to produce a specific chemical? Uh, because sometimes the production chain can be pretty long and complex. Um, but do also much more advanced things is um, try to understand where it is best to source some of the ingredients from, um, what margins they will be making, and so on. There's some pretty, um, pretty complicated uh, uh, calculations going on in these use cases. Um, again, this customer, we've done various proof of concepts and have two people for roughly the last year already on. Uh, on their project, and that's part of their development. So this gives a little bit of an idea on uh, some of the, the larger projects where we where, where we are involved. Um, last but not least, I got a couple more slides. I want to talk about our solution framework. So being involved in some of these larger projects, um, uh, Obviously, in many cases, we are obliged to follow technology choices that some of our customers already have because you arrive and you are part of an existing IT uh, infrastructure, and, and our job is to best fit Neo4j into that uh, infrastructure. But, but there are cases also where we are uh, at freedom to suggest other pieces of technology, um, and customer might not have made decisions yet. And so we've slowly started working on what we call a solutions framework, um, which is a set of technologies that, that, that we feel fit really well with, uh, with Neo4j. Um, so on top of the Neo4j graph platform, we have this solution framework, which consists of, um, uh, of various pieces of technology. And I'm, I won't go in, in depth on it today because that um, is probably a full, a full uh, worthwhile, a full webinar. Um, but in essence, the solutions framework has a bunch of technologies that are compatible with the graph platform. And on top of the solutions framework, we've actually built some reusable code um, or, or um, let's say some quick starters for projects, typically um, or, or, or ones that we've had most successful with so far are a recommendation engine. So a Piece of uh, piece of technology that allows us to rapidly build a recommendation engine for um, for customers, um, and we also have a solution that does network operation. And based on experience with various customers and, and various use cases, we're releasing um, we're releasing more of these um, uh, reusable reusable solutions on top of the solutions frame. Um, why are we interested in um, in such a solutions framework and such solutions? Well, obviously it all goes back to what I said at the beginning. We want, we want customers to be successful as fast as possible and we want them to have a great out of the box experience. So this allows us to accelerate customer success, which is eventually what, uh, what we are all about. It allows us to also efficiently scale our operation. Um, uh, we are a product company. Um, we do services to make sure customers are successful. 
we're not in the business of services just to hire more consultants and make them billable on projects. We want to scale our operations in an efficient way and, and remain a product company. Um, and obviously, building some of these solutions and getting hands-on experience um, further increases our, our um, experience with the product in the field, um, allows us to give feedback to engineering, and leads to a further increased uh, product maturity. Okay, one example, uh, one example of a tool that's part of the solution framework that I want to elaborate on. And again, this is just one of the many tools that is part of it. Is um, so, so don't overly focus on just this one. I put it in here as an example. But it's a kettle data integration. What we have noticed is that many customers invest a large amount of time <clears throat> in building a, a, a Neo4j application. And then once the application is ready, they need to migrate various data sources into, into Neo4j. To, to make that process as efficient as possible, um, we, looked at, we looked on the market as what's available in terms of, um, uh, of tools. And we found an, an open source uh, data integration tool called Kettle, um, which has a high level of maturity. And, um, and we've actually built a Neo4j output steps for that tool. So this tool actually allows you to read in various, um, various data sources and it has connectors for, um, for practically all relational databases. It has connectors for, for instance, SAP, Salesforce. It has connectors for uh, streaming data. It has connectors to various NoSQL databases, etc. And it allows you uh, to use a simple GUI to connect to those, uh, all those data sources. Um, and then define uh, or map that data stream that, that you just tapped into, map it to a um, to a graph model that um, uh, that you define visually here, and that maps straight to your new 4 j database. The advantage of using a data integration tool to do this work is that you re you, you reduce the amount of scripting. Um, you have a much more intuitive uh, UI to do the work. So much easier for resources to get up to speed to do this type of work, but it also offers a workflow engine to um, uh, to structure your work, uh, to put it into logical blocks so you get more or easier maintainable and understandable code. It allows you to do logging, uh, trap errors, and find, find problems as you come across it without that it actually stops your data load or holds your script. And so on and so on. So there's various uh, various um, advantages that using such a tool uh, actually gives you um, when migrating data into Neo4j. And again, this is just one of the tools that is part of the framework. We're also looking at ways of um, auto deploying Neo4j. Um, we are working, for instance, with Grand Stack as a standard for developing applications on top of Neo4j. Again might not be the choice that every customer will make, but if we have a have a chance of setting the standard as a customer, um, this is one of the technologies we use, and so on and so on. There's many, um, there's many technologies that are compatible with Neo4j where we try to standardize and even and, and further accelerate your experience. Um, so I, I guess from the whole explanation that I've been giving so far, um, by now it should be clear that if you get a Neo4j consultant to, uh, to visit you, that we're not just talking about people that understand the Neo4j database, uh, but people that ob obviously also know how to do graph modeling, um, that know how to build application logic in or on top of Neo4j, uh, people that know how to write APIs on how to communicate with the database, and people that know how to do data integration uh, or, or uh, data migration into your database. Um, we know how to architect and design your whole application, uh, manage the projects um, all the way up to rollout and deploy. And as I said, in some of the cases, we've actually ended up um, hosting the solution for the customer and continue to maintain, maintain, uh, maintain the solution, which I, um, which I may hope is a testimony to the good job we've done for them. Um, so I think I'm, I'm going to halt here. If you want to 
if you want to get engaged with um, with Neo4j professional services, um, the way to do it is ask your sales rep to set up a scoping call or contact me, contact me directly uh, after the webinar. Um, set up a scoping call. We'll talk about your needs and, and where we believe you need help. We'll document that in a statement of work. And typically, um, if we all agree about the statement of work, typically two to three weeks after um, after a first discussion, we can have people on site and have a kickoff meeting. So that um, that ends my talk.